impact that Kate had on my life is when she came to live with me in 1965. And uh, she wanted to know where did I go to church. And uh, I said, you don't go to church. <laughs> and so she said, oh, we got to go to church. And so she, we went and started going and, and through her, I accepted Christ, you know, at this little corner, a little storefront church uh, with Bishop Foster. And uh, she was, I mean, she helped me, showed me so many things, and she helped me with so many things. She taught me how to keep house, and taught me how to um, take care of my business. Thing, you know, the household business, not outside business, but inside business. And this is a woman that didn't have no, no education, but she knew, she had that, what the old people used to call mother wit. She knew how to take care of her things. And um, yeah, she, she was a, a joy in my life. We had such moments where I could talk to her about anything. And I would say, don't tell, don't, don't, don't tell it. She said, baby, it'll die in me like a disease. And uh, that just went so far with me that I could, well, I could confide. Not like, she wasn't my mom, but she was, she was my mom. And uh, that was the life I had with Kate. And uh, she became my, not only like a mom to me, but she was my best friend. She was my very best friend. So it took me a, a moment to realize that she, I won't have my friend no more. That, that was the impact that Kate had on my life. What she told us about God, we tried it, and, it, and it's exactly what she said. So I think that that's probably the part that I'm thinking that, you know, don't ever dumb down your impartation, which you have to give. It may not look like it's valuable right now. Cause it just didn't seem like it would be. We at the table like this. <laughs> is this ever gonna be like this? Is this prayer gonna last much longer? <laughs> Cause this Sunday we want to go out and play. We want to go out, you know. We want to go do kid stuff. But after so many times, and I think that's where the repetition may be, is because. It wasn't necessarily a different prayer every time. And so, therefore, it became the prayer. And so, even if you missed it two weeks ago, you know what she prayed. Because <laughs> it's the same prayer. So, and I remember she used to say at the, in the, every prayer, and I may not be here with y'all much longer. But remember, Remember God. Those are the ringing words. He always be with you. I may not be with you, but he'll always be. He think of this, you know. He ain't fan of that. <laughs> she didn't move from it. You couldn't convince her away from it. And although the prayer may to some people have been primitive and or repetitious. She believed it. And when she taught it to us, obviously we believed it because the question keeps coming up like, where's Katie Jones? Well, Katie Jones lives in me. Katie Jones is right here because what she imparted 
what she gave to me, what she gave to my siblings has passed through generations. It was given to my mother. It was given to us. I gave it to mine. Mine is now giving to hers and my siblings the same thing. We all got past the introduction to God at that dining room table. Because before her, there was no church. We didn't go to church. We didn't, you know, there was no, I don't even recall a Bible in our house. I don't recall talking about God in our home. But when Katie Jones hit the scene, uh, and I remember the story my mother sharing with me, saying that she asked when they when she first got to New York, it's like, well, where, what church do y'all go to? And my mother's first response was, well, we don't go to church. And she put a halt to that right away. Oh, yeah, we going to church. <laughs> oh, yeah. we Now, mind you, she's coming into their home. And she's making a declaration that we will be going to church. See, and so this is the type of person that Katie Jones was. In other words, she didn't back down. She could have came and said, well, I'll just have to find me a church. And and if y'all don't want to go, that's just on y'all. But she knew the importance. I got to pull my whole village with me. We all going, not, not, we all going to church. So my mother, uh, got saved because my grandmother insisted that we go to church. And so this is kind of the onset, the building of our family and our relationship and connection to God. And I'll say this, just a little sidebar. This is why it's important for our children to have the introduction to God. And this is where that scripture becomes very, very revelant. revelant. <laughs> what am I saying? Revelant to us today is that if we are, uh, uh, let's say, introduced to the word of God, if we are now poured into with the word of God, it's only going to be so far before we just find ourselves coming back to what we know. We won't drift. We may drift, but we won't stay there because the seed has been planted. And that's where we've got to find our Katie Joneses. We've got to find our rightful place so that we can make these type of impartations. We didn't even understand back then that's what it was. It was just an impartation to us. You know, it was just a part of her role. And she didn't have a title. She didn't carry a, uh, a church title to do it. She did it from the dining room table at our home. And most of the time, that's where we, we forget that that's where God needs to be in the beginning. It's great that we go to church and find Christ. But if it ain't in the home, if Christ and God is not being introduced to our children, our grandchildren in the home, then... It's going to be a miss and it's going to be a hit and miss. You're going to have one or two that may find themselves straight away. But when I call my sisters and my brothers, even if we're not doing it all right, they have a reverence. I forgot. There, there's a, there's a, there's, there's a place that we don't play. Okay. You may play about a lot of things, but the seed of reverence for God was imparted into us and that's a place we don't play so we don't go there with the things of God if we ain't gonna live right or do right we okay that's it but we're not gonna touch God we're not going to disrespect or dishonor we don't we don't uh as a matter of fact I'll have another memory my father had made a statement because he found a snake in our in our home we found a snake in the, in the house one day and my father made a statement that because he was so afraid of the snake, you know, he misspoke and said that if he stayed in that house that night, that God was a bad word. I'm not going to say the word, but he, he said, but if I stay in this house tonight, God is, you know, he's something. And it wasn't a nice word. Well, the, the, we, we, we went into instant shock. Those children that were at home, we, we didn't know what to do with that. We, because 
God was real to us like, to the point where, like, did you really just say that God was, you know, this, that, or the third? It shocked our system because we just couldn't believe that he called God to that. Well, needless to say, he stayed in the house that night. Me personally, I'd have slept in the car just because I said something so stupid. But nevertheless, he didn't. He stayed in the house. Uh, but it 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 was something that bothered my psyche for a long time that he would bring that type of wording to God. And all of that steps back to Katie Jones, what she had imparted, what she had instilled into us. Uh, the day that that, that woman passed away in uh, February of 1974, the day that she departed, I felt like I had lost my mind. I'm 10 years old. I would have been 11 that March because she died in February. Uh, she died at 74. So I would have, I was 10 years old and about to be 11. And the day that she died, I literally felt like something broke something. When they said it, I almost couldn't understand what they were saying. It's like, like, can you repeat that? Can you, can you say that again? Like, and, but we were kids, you know, so we didn't really get the, the advantage of details. I knew she was in the hospital and I knew she was sick, but she's grandma <laughs> and grandma prayed. And so grandma was going to be okay. So, you know, this was not supposed to happen. So when they said, well, grandma died, died. Okay. Died What that. What was, what, what does that mean? She's not coming back. She's not coming back. What? So my whole mind could not fix it. And I remember um, not wanting to go outside and play. I remember being in the house just quiet. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. Um, this was a time where my father lost it. So he was not where we could lean on him. And because he lost it, my mother had to probably be to him what he needed to help him you know, hold it together. But I don't recall this, that presence of her for us, for the kids. When she died, we lost our comfort and we lost our shield. We lost the one who would, if everybody else was doing their own thing, she was the one that was going to be there to help us get through what we need to get through. So when that day when she died, we were all fending for ourselves, emotionally fending for ourselves. And I think that it seemed like it was forever between the time they announced her death and us actually burying her. But at 10, it could have been just in my head, but we had to go all the way to South Carolina from New York. And I remember the day of, we were all prepping, we all had to wear white, all the grandkids, girls had to wear white dresses and you know, we white from head to toe. I remember getting there, my stomach is nervous. I don't know what to expect. I don't know, this is my first death. I don't know what death is. I have never experienced it, I don't know what you know, to, to to make up this thing. But when we get there, you know, I don't know if you all know, but back they had the coffin. It was already open. And uh, when we walked in with the family, um, I could see her nose. This is my first memory of her after her announcement of death. The coffin was open, and I could see her nose sitting up. That's all I could see. And when I got to the coffin, there was my protector, motionless, not moving, and I just lost it. 
there. I do. She wasn't coming back home. And I started to scream, don't leave me. I knew then I was just going to be on this journey alone. And I began to scream, don't leave me. Grandma, don't leave me. Don't leave me. And, of course, you know, they usher you away from the coffin. And I fell into my mother's and my father. They were there. I already been sitting. My father was just a crumbled mess. He was unable to console us. My mother, unable to console us. And at that moment, I a lot of my memories are gone at that point because I think at that point there was a shutdown for me. Um, and I remember thinking like today, before I got ready to do this show, I said to myself, Katie Jones, I wish I had known to love you better. I wish I had known to embrace you more and get like, you, you know, how you got a lemon or something and you try to get as much juice as you can from it. I wish I had squeezed a little harder and got a little bit more out of it because that's how much she impacted us. That's how much she, our lives needed her. And from that day, I mean, I, this is no slight. I, I, I spoke to my mother about this uh, before and told them, this is no slight to you, but this is just the importance of what is needed in the family to embrace our Katie Joneses and allow them the nurturing and the embracing for the generations to come. And so no slight to them, my mother and my father, because it's just facts of what it was. But our house became chaotic at that point, after her death. It became a house of horror in some cases. Things were said and done that Katie Jones would have never allowed or never in a million years permitted to happen. Um, some of our worst memories that I can think of as far as how a family struggles financially, emotionally, even physically happened after Katie Jones's departure. Um, and I think about it this day. I, I still am thankful for those short, almost 10 years that she came because it was so full of what we needed that even though we went through those years of horror or uh, I say bad days, you know, my, the family breaking down, but not broken up. Does that make sense? Let me see. Breaking down, but stay together. So it's just a lot of drama, a lot of, you know, uh, abuse, mentally, physically, uh, vices, all of this abuse that's going on in a family, all of this kind of just like Katie Jones was like the keeper, the doorkeeper or the, uh, the one on the wall. She, she kept the enemy at bay, so to speak, but it seemed like at her death when she left that there was no one there to now keep back the hand of the enemy. And so I, that's what it appeared to be. Now I'm much more knowledgeable to now today to know that what she had imparted into us at the time was just a seed. And the seed in the ground doesn't seem to appear to be very much. It just, just seems like a little dot in the dirt. But over the years, during those times that was so bad sometimes, that little seed was growing. Those moments, those times that she imparted to us, they were growing and they became what we are today. 
I would not dare say that Katie Jones had nothing to do with being the woman of God that I am today. She had a whole lot to do with that. She had a whole lot to do with, uh, I say, the confidence. Although the enemy tried to rob me of that several times, the confidence, you know, knowing who you are, just being okay with who you are. I remember this memory. Oh God, thank you. Uh, I remember this memory that, that my grandmother was, she, she was the neighborhood, uh, referee. She, uh, we would go outside and we would play. She believed in clean the house and get outside. And be in here, tan up the house all day, clean up and go outside, go play. So we would go outside and she was that kind of grandmother. She was interactive. She just didn't sit you outside and, and just be in her room parlaying in the bed watching the stories. That just wasn't what she didn't do. Now, she did watch stories, but most of the time, if she couldn't sit out there on the porch and watch us play, most of the time we wasn't going to be out there. We are going to be in the yards where she can keep an eye. And so she was the referee. She would keep the order. She would make sure everybody played fair. And if we couldn't get the call on, you know, that we were playing, if if, if the teams couldn't figure out was it, were they out or were they in, we would look to her. Everybody would look to the grandma on the porch and say, what was it? And she would make the call. Now, we didn't know like the call, depending on the team you was on. <laughs> but we had to respect it because she was going to call it fair. But she was that kind of grandmother. She just didn't nurture us. She nurtured the neighborhood. She chasing the neighborhood. Like if, if one of the kids get cutting up, one, you know, she'll send them home. Go home. You cutting up too bad. She send them on home. Or, or on this particular day, this one little girl, she would uh, terrorize me. She just all the time pick on me, pick on me, pick on me. And this particular day, my grandmother was on the porch. She, you know, she was just bothering me and bothering me and bothering me. And when I say bothering me, she was physically hitting me, doing things to me, you know, and I, I don't know why she just picked on me. I think because she was the baby girl in the family. But she, um, this particular day, my grandmother uh, watched me uh, retaliate <laughs> with the most fierceness. I had took off my shoe. And I had gotten tired of her bullying me. And I took off my shoe and I began to, hit her with my shoe. And so my grandmother let me get a couple of good licks in. They said, all right now, girl. All right now, come on up as on this. And I was crying and I kept thinking to myself, but she bothered me, you know, but my grandmother was like this. She was a fair one. You know, in other words, okay, you got your couple of licks in, now come up on the porch. <laughs> so she, even to that extent, she was allowing me to, to defend myself, but don't take it too far. Come on up here on the porch. <laughs> so even in those, those memories, those thoughts, I think about her. She she had the balance. She had the ability to um, to see situations. And she wasn't necessarily, I can't remember her being partial to anybody, like being uh, um, extra for anybody. She was always fair, and it was always uh, seemed to be an equal thing. She taught us all kinds, like I, I we, if we have a, a outage and, and I had to wash clothes and I didn't have a washing machine, I pray God that never happened. But if it ever had to, I, I know how to wash clothes without without a washing machine. Because Katie Jones said, we're going to do laundry even though the washing machine is broke. So she got us a washboard. Where she got it from? Probably out of them pockets. I don't know. But anyway, she, she brought the and here we are in the tub washing clothes because we not only did we wash the clothes in the tub, but we we rinsed them and then we had to hang them outside. She wanted all of her clothes hung outside, so we that was a part of our duties. But she was just she was the balance. And when she passed away, it seemed like that balance went away. And and so I was my thought goes back to how our years of development without her in the beginning seemed very hard and, and, and unfruitful. But down the road, out of the ground, are these oak trees, Boykins, her 
her seeds that are now uh, with our own space. We are now the seed droppers to the next generation. She has put into the ground, into us things that manifested so many years later through many trials and through many tribulations, through many errors, because all of us was on here, all of my siblings were on here. We could tell you about the errors and the and the and the missteps that we have done, uh, the failures and the faults that we have done. But at the end of the day, we all will attest to this one thing that Katie Jones lives and she lives within us. Her ten years of impartation have taken us not just in our lifetime, but they will reach well beyond us into our children's and now my grandchildren and hopefully into my grand great great grandchildren as well, what Katie Jones was to us. And so when I asked the question, you know, where is Katie Jones? She's right here. And if I called my daughter, Nicole, she would answer or have to answer or should answer. She lives here. And then Lala, my granddaughter, hopefully one day will be able to raise her hand and say, here is Katie Jones right here. Because what was given to me and imparted into me and... embedded in my soul <sighs> will live way beyond me, way beyond Katie Jones. And so sometimes you don't have to be the rich and the famous to be impactful. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the brightest all you have to do is have the love for your seed. And that's what Katie Jones had. She had a love for us that superseded anything. And she gave to her very last. And I will never forget ever, as long as I'm living, what she has done for me. I know my siblings, we all have testaments and uh, we all have memories of her. And they will last us a lifetime. And in this little broadcast, I also get to set into stone her legacy, what she was, and now who she was uh, and who she is. Because here, in Little San Pal, Kate Jones lives. So I just want to say thank you for letting me share my heart, my memory, and my legacy of Katie Jones. God bless you. See you next week.